political decision. We're thinking this is something that we should do because we have, but it, we're forced to do it. And, and I think we shouldn't be forced. We should say, yes, absolutely we should be doing it because people want to see it. And that, that's the more important decision. I'll be brief. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's it's really it's really an interesting discussion that we're having. Um, when I was starting out again, um, it was to make Canadian films uh, as, as opposed to American films. We didn't have an industry to tell our own stories, and I think this is in general what we want to do as artists. We want to tell our own stories, and that's that's the important thing. Okay, we will now take it to the audience. So you had a comment? Yes. Uh, could it be that um, they are saying that we don't have the audience yet, so therefore it risks that um, So the question, the question is, do they, I guess the gatekeepers, uh, think that we basically don't have an audience in Canada, so they think it's too risky, um, I guess, to diversify the stories? Uh, because, I mean, they're hard to even when there's all white people, they can't sell tickets. So, I guess that would be the question. Answers? Panel? That's, uh, that's the basic answer you hear about diversification in media everywhere. So, people always have that answer is, we don't know, I don't know if people are going to go see it, I don't know if people are going to watch that on TV, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe that's, that's just a conservative culture of, of corporations. And, and big organizations. I'm, I, I don't know if I can venture a guess on, on that, but that's definitely what you hear. I, we can't, I don't know if the audience is going to come. If they don't want to take as big of a risk, maybe it's a, a, also a Canadian risk-averse sort of culture as well. Um, but I, I think you, you're bringing up a good point. Um, just speaking as someone else who works in television, I think that there's a lot of factors at play, and I think that things have been, I mean, I agree that Canada is still a bit behind the States, but I think in the past few years we've actually seen quite a difference in the way that our broadcasters are, are looking at diverse content, and I think that is as a response to the diversity in U.S. media. So just to give you some background information, when I first started pitching my show, I pitched it at a contest, and the response from all of the judges across the board was, I don't know who would want to watch a show with people like that in it. And I remember just being so heartbroken. But fast forward, and it's only been a span of a few years, I mean, we were turned down by a lot of networks, but then we had one that did decide that this is the perfect time for this. And not only that, that it's, it's a bit late for broadcasters to be suddenly into diverse content. This is a long time coming, and they should have done it. So. I wish I could say which network it was, but they are A plus in my books. And uh, and yeah, I mean, I think it's it's a number of factors at play. Of course, Canadian networks in general have less money, and they can invest in fewer projects. And in the States, they can make 100 pilots for every three that we can make. So they have to be more conservative when they make their choices, and a lot of them aren't willing to take that risk. I think, as well, people tend to relate to or like stories that they can recognize themselves in. So I think in some cases there is an unconscious bias when they're going through these treatments and pitches and choosing stories that they recognize from their lives. A lot of our network executives are Caucasian. So my, um, my recent ex experience is um, that uh, we are perceived as a bit of a risk. Um, I, I kind of think that you know outside the visible minority um, community, um, folks don't know enough about us, um, and that could be why we're perceived as, as a risk. Um, if I talk to someone about dowry who uh, is not South Asian, the first question I get is, what is a dowry? And, and you've lost their interest right there. So I, I think when you're, even when I go to pitch um, news stories to, to folks, um, the first thing they will want to know is, is this universal? Like, can someone who's not South Asian relate to this? Um, so for that reason, I do think that, yeah, we, we are seen as a bit of a risk. Yeah, um, 
Yeah, I would say um, it's, it's, some of it is insecurity. They go, oh, um, if I take a chance on doing something different, um, will anyone watch it? Will it work? Um, you know, so I think, I think they're, they're sort of like people tend to, to work, do, and do what they've done in the past that's worked. And, and then maybe they're not open uh, to, to trying new things as much uh, because of that. Um, I just remember uh, a few years ago the CRTC um, did a study and they found that there were more um, space aliens on Canadian television than Asians. It's, it's a well, you know, you hear that, people talk about that a lot. But. We need more aliens on television. Okay, so you write your MP, you make that happen. Do we have other questions from the audience? I know we do, right there. Uh, I see from you guys talking that you had a lot of barriers before. You reach the stage where you are in now. What sort of determination did you go with? And how did you overcome the barriers? Okay, so the question I believe is, some people on this panel have had careers before they entered the entertainment industry, and what sort of um, determination does it take to become an artist from f coming from another field? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Whenever you can. You have to be determined to live poor. <laughs> have not a lot of money for a long time. I think, uh, I mean, my experience is that I, I've been an independent filmmaker on and off for many years. Um, like let's say for the last 20 um, since I left university and um, I've done a lot of different jobs uh, from working in the film industry to retail straight retail so um, I think it's just it is there's a determination but maybe it's um, it's stubbornness too you just have to keep on trying at it I have I, I've tried at it I've done and I've done different jobs in the entertainment industry as well so I've been an editor and I've done well doing that job, and only somewhat recently I've moved towards writing, which is another big jump, which hopefully is working out for me. So, yeah, for me it was, I think stubbornness was more what brought me to where I am now. Um, I, I think I agree. Stubbornness is a really, really important factor. Um, I was working for a long time as an actress, originally, and I still am, and writing a sort of just happened because I wasn't paying attention to it in this weird way where it's like I want to study things that help me understand people I want to study stories and myths psychology and and sociology and then it just so happened one day I was improvising on set and then they asked me to submit a spec I had no idea what that was it's a it's a script that you write as a test to see if more or less and so I wrote one really fast and then ended up getting a job so <laughs> That's how I got into it, um, but I do know, one thing that I do know is that um, when, when I was working as an actor, the power was always in somebody else's hands to say whether or not someone who looked like me could be on TV. And then when I started creating my own work and started making my own films and television shows, I, I moved, I overcame that barrier in a way because I was, I was choosing who was going to appear on screen, and I was choosing to show people who looked different. And, some who had disabil disability, skinny, fat, Asian, everything. And I, I think in that realm, coming at it from a broad angle, riding the creative wave, following life where, wherever your passion takes you and where the opportunity arises, and also having the humility to, to listen to feedback and everything, I think that's what gets you past those barriers. Also, willing to live on ramen for a long time. Put Nagan in. I, yeah, I completely agree. I think you have to have tenacity for this work um, and uh, have, have a really thick skin when people say no or that you can't do this.